staging and prognostic factors. The survival of patients with prostate cancer depends very much on how malignant the cancer is and how far it has spread. The term grade refers to how malignant or aggressive a cancer is. This is not to be confused with the stage, which describes how far a cancer has grown. The best cancers are both low grade and low stage. The worst cancers are high grade and high stage. Gleason grading. Staging system. Staging workup. Gleason rating. The grade of a cancer basically tells how malignant or aggressive a cancer is. Some cancers are so aggressive that any treatment will probably fail. These cancers are called high grade and usually kill the patient quickly. Some cancers are not very aggressive and grow very slowly. Patients with low grade cancers can live a long time even if they are not treated at all. A pathologist named Dr. Gleason devised a popular scale that tells how malignant a cancer is. The scale has two numbers which are added together for the total score. The scale runs between 3 and 10, with an average cancer being about Gleason 7. Cancers graded as Gleason 8, 9, or 10 are highly malignant and dangerous. Cancers graded as Gleason 3 or 4 are fairly benign and will not progress rapidly. Some pathologists merely grade the cancers as well differentiated, Gleason 3 or 4, moderately differentiated, Gleason 5 through 7, and poorly differentiated, Gleason 8 through 10. Pathologists can have small disagreements over the correct grade and may vary by one point or so. The Gleason grade given to a small needle biopsy may be different than the grade given when the pathologist has the whole prostate gland to look at. Staging system. The stage of a cancer determines how far the cancer has grown. Patients with small microscopic cancer will do better than patients with large cancers or cancers that have spread to the bones. There are two different staging systems. American Staging System and TNM Staging System. In practice, the American system is easier to use and more relevant to prostate cancer because it fits the behavior of the disease better. However, large research studies usually use the TNM system so that all investigators can understand the results. American Staging System. TNM Staging. American Staging System Cancer of the prostate progresses logically through all the stages from A1 to B1 to B2 to C to D1 to D2. The proper treatment is dependent on the actual stage of the cancer. Before removal of the prostate gland, a patient is said to be in the clinical stage. After surgical removal and examination of the tissue, a patient is in the pathological stage. Very frequently, the clinical stage and pathological stage are not the same. In fact, the clinical stage often underestimates how far the cancer has spread. The next screen shows the American staging system. Select each box with tumor, lymph nodes, and metastases to display appropriate stage and prognosis. TNM staging system. T1 tumors are those found incidentally at TURP, comparable to American Stage A. This group is subdivided into Stage T1A, less than 5% of the removed prostate tissue, and Stage T1B, more than 5%. A special stage called T1C is for patients with a needle biopsy showing cancer, but a prostate gland that otherwise appears normal. T2 tumors are confined to the prostate, comparable to American Stage B. T2A tumors involve half a side of the prostate or less. T2B tumors involve more than a half of a side of the prostate gland, but not both sides. T2 
T2C tumors involve both side or lobes of the prostate gland. T3 tumors have penetrated the capsule of the prostate gland and are the same as stage C of the American system. T3A have penetrated the capsule of the prostate on one side only, while stage T3B cancers have penetrated both side walls of the prostate gland. T4 prostate cancers are fixed to examination and cannot be moved about. These large cancers have invaded other organs such as the bladder or rectum. T4B cancers are fixed to the walls of the pelvis. N1 means a single lymph node less than 2 centimeters inside has a metastasis. This is comparable to stage D1. M1 describes metastases. M1 is subdivided into M1A, M1B, and M1C. M1 is comparable to American stage D2. TNM staging. In the TNM system, a cancer is described by T, N, and M. T refers to the size of the tumor. N refers to the number of lymph nodes involved with cancer. M stands for metastasis and refers to sites of metastatic spread other than lymph nodes. If there is no cancer, a zero number is assigned. If it is unknown, an X is assigned. The next screen shows the TNM staging system. Select each box with tumor, T, lymph nodes, N, and metastases, M, to show appropriate stage and prognosis. TNM staging system. T1 tumors are those found incidentally at TURP, comparable to American stage A. This group is subdivided into stage T1A, less than 5% of the removed prostate tissue, and stage T1B, more than 5%. A special stage called T1C is for patients with a needle biopsy showing cancer, but a prostate gland that otherwise appears normal. T2 tumors are confined to the prostate, comparable to American stage B. T2A tumors involve half a side of the prostate or less. T2B tumors involve more than a half of a side of the prostate gland but not both sides. T2C tumors involve both sides or lobes of the prostate gland. T3 tumors have penetrated the capsule of the prostate gland and are the same as stage C of the American system. T3A have penetrated the capsule of the prostate on one side only, while stage T3B cancers have penetrated both side walls of the prostate gland. T4 prostate cancers are fixed to examination and cannot be moved about. These large cancers have invaded other organs such as the bladder or rectum. T4B cancers are fixed to the walls of the pelvis. N0 means there is no evidence that lymph nodes have cancer in them. N1 means a single lymph node less than 2 centimeters inside has a metastasis. This is comparable to stage D1. Staging workup. Numerous diagnostic tests can be performed to determine the stage of a prostate cancer. Each test has a certain accuracy as well as specific shortcomings. Not all patients need every test. They must be taken in the context of the patient's health as well as the potential treatments of patients Staging workup. Numerous diagnostic tests can be performed to determine the stage of a prostate cancer. Each test has a certain accuracy as well as specific shortcomings. Not all patients need every test. They must be taken in the context of the patient's health as well as the potential treatments a patient might receive. Common tests which help in the staging or prostate include PSA staging prostatic acid phosphatase, CT scan, 
MRI, bone scan, bone x-rays, lymph node dissection, PSA staging. The amount of PSA in the bloodstream cannot really positively determine the stage of a prostate cancer. However, the PSA level can lead the physician toward the most efficient method for determining the cancer's stage. In general, PSA values under 10 usually implies that the cancer has not spread outside the prostate gland. PSA values over 100 to 200 usually mean that metastases are present. In between there is a large gray zone. Lymph nodes usually, but not always, develop small metastases by the time a PSA reaches 50. Prostatic Acid Phosphatase, PAP. Prostatic Acid Phosphatase, PAP, is another protein like PSA that is made by the prostate gland. Most urologists believe that an elevation of prostatic acid phosphatase occurs only when bone metastases are present. Prostatic acid phosphatase is very rarely ordered today. CT scan. CT scans or CAT scans are obtained to determine the extent of the cancer or the stage of the cancer. The CT scan can give an indication of the enlargement of the prostate gland. If lymph nodes are enlarged from possible involvement of cancer, the CT scan may show the enlarged nodes. In general, if a patient's PSA is less than 10, it is not worthwhile getting a CT scan. The CT scan will also show abnormalities within the liver, kidneys, and other organs, which may be helpful to know. Magnetic Resonance Imaging, MRI. There are several types of magnetic resonance imaging, MRI units, which can be used to picture the extent of a prostate cancer. An MRI of the body will show large metastases from prostate cancer. A more specialized MRI, called an endorectal MRI, is best for analyzing the prostate gland and the lymph nodes in the pelvis. For this study, a probe is placed inside the rectum while an MRI is being done. This study is more accurate in determining the spread of cancer to the lymph nodes or invasion of the cancer through the capsule of the prostate or the seminal vesicles. Bone scan. Prosthetic cancer commonly spreads to bone if left untreated. Bone scan is used as part of a staging to detect if the cancer has spread to the bones. A bone scan measures bone injury and new bone growth. Bone scan involves injections of low-level radioactive isotopes that emit gamma rays. The rays are selectively absorbed by the healing bones. Cancer cells make the bone react to the isotope to a greater degree than normal bone cells. The differences in the uptake of the radioisotopes are picked up as hot spots by the computer. A bone scan will also show old injuries to bone or arthritis. Bone X-rays. Generally, cancer of the prostate eventually spreads to bone where it stimulates new bone growth. This new bone usually appears as very white or osteoblastic on X-rays of the bone. The X-rays are not as sensitive in finding bone metastases as a bone scan. However, they can be very helpful. Often arthritis or an old injury will make a bone scan appear positive but the bone x-rays will show that a metastasis is not present. Lymph node dissection. Cancer of the prostate first spreads to lymph nodes deep in the pelvis called the obturator lymph nodes. If the lymph nodes are involved with cancer, treatments aimed at the prostate gland alone will fail in their attempts to cure. Therefore, the obturator lymph nodes are removed as part of the treatment in radical prostatectomy.
nose should be removed and examined if and only if it will make a difference in the way the patient will be treated. Patients who need their lymph nodes carefully examined usually have a PSA level of greater than 10 or a Gleason grade of 8. Lymph nodes can be removed prior to any treatment aimed at just the prostate gland. The nodes can be removed with a standard incision about 8 inches long on the lower abdomen. More commonly, however, the lymph nodes are removed laparoscopically. Laparoscopic lymph node removal is done by placing four small openings in the abdomen, each about the size of a pencil. Through these openings, instruments and a TV camera are placed inside the abdomen, and the lymph nodes are carefully dissected out and removed. Since the body has many lymph nodes, the nodes that are removed are not missed. The laparoscopic removal of lymph nodes takes about two hours and is done under general anesthesia. There is very little blood loss. There is a small risk of complications such as injury to another organ or formation of a lymphocele. The patient has little pain after the procedure. The gastrointestinal tract does not function well for about 30 hours. Therefore, one or two nights stay in a hospital is necessary. The pathologist will carefully examine the lymph nodes for metastatic spread. Sometimes examination is performed immediately during the procedure by a method called frozen section. If the examination is done over the next few days or a week, it is called a permanent section and is more thorough and accurate. Treatment of prostate cancer. Radical prostatectomy. Radiation therapy.